Lake Chahafi is a pretty lake in the southeast of Kisoro, such a realistic destination for an excursion. On three sides, it is surrounded by the rolling hills of the Birungas. On the fourth, the highest of the Birunga peaks, Mountain Muhabura rises majestically upon its own. Many tourists are hiking it because they can be on top of the three countries once they reach the third peak. Mount Muhavura has a crater lake on top, but is shared by Uganda and Rwanda. This lake here, Lake Chahafi, next to it is the bigger lake called Lake Burela and Lake Ruhondo. And then there's Lake Kayumbu, there's Mutanda, there's Murehe. But why do you think they are even in a distributed lakes? Some are in Rwanda, others are in Uganda. This is a rich lake in terms of biodiversity. It has so many birds. It is surrounded by papyrus, ring fence papyrus in every corner. You can actually do bird watching from, from the lodge and move around the, road, the lake. You see the pelican there? You know the pink, back, pink backed pelican? You can move closer to it and see. Well, having traveled over 500 kilometers from Kampala to Kisoro here, just the bordering district to Rwanda, we are reliably told that just five and a half kilometers after this lake will be in Rwanda. This is an amazing episode where we've just watched amazing and spectacular sceneries around this beautiful part of Uganda. In the morning, you wake up the sweet jazz music cascading into your room from an orchestra of various birds merrily playing out their daily morning tunes. You step out into the rising sunlight and your eyes crush into a delicious sight. Mountain Muhabura erects in his invariable aim to the skies. The crowd of cloud around his peak indicating that he has successfully hit the Celestials. Mount Muhabura, or Mount Muhabura for that matter, is called Mount Muhabura, the guide, standing tall at 4,127 meters. Because you can see it from any direction. So it is like the beacon of uh, when, if you, even when you uncover certain parts, as far as Kavaraga, when you, on a clear day, you see the peak. So it is very outstanding that it, it is a guide, it gives direction. The history around Lake Chahafi goes up to the First World War, as told by Nelson Mogisha. The Belgians came in from Congo and took over this, uh, this part of Bufumbira and Bufundi, which was having chiefs of the uh, Rwanda Kingdom. And we are told that uh, actually the Belgians were really very harsh. They demanded to be paid tributes, they demanded forced labor, they demanded anything that was out of uh, the ordinary from the natives. This is around 1900, late, late 1890s to early 1900. Okay. Yeah, so, so they, they, you know, when they were agreeing to divide colonies, if you look, for example, in, if you look at Kisoro, for example, it has two border borders, the official ones. There's Chanika, which is five kilometers from here. There's Bunagana, which is about 19 kilometers from here. And uh, Bunagana is the border with Congo, Chanika is the border with Rwanda. Well, ask yourself why this small part of Uganda called Kisoro has, has two boundaries of two different countries. That is how it came, by agreeing to share these physical features. For example, Mount Sabino is shared by three countries. This was part of the deal of how to agree and share these physical features. A tree forest up here, shared by Uganda and Rwanda. So. Uh, during that time, that's, how, that's what happened. The Belgians agreed to uh, stay with Congo, part of what is mo modern day Congo. The British who came in from uh, central Uganda agreed, took over Bufumbira, or what is modern day Chigezi. And then the Germans also stayed in Rwanda. It is said that if the British and Belgians had been defeated by the Germans, the whole of Kigezi region will be part of Rwanda and not Uganda as it is. Up there, there is Murora Hill. It was the Anglo-Berigian military outpost. 
there was an attack on January 1st in 1915. And on Lake Burela, there was also a German base. There was also a fortified base for the Germans who were in Rwanda. And it was during the World War I. So they came from Kabare and fortified that hill, built bandas, built trenches in anticipation of an attack. So the day came, January 1st, 1915, the Germans advanced. The anglo belgians who were positioned there with Captain Salvan and Namanye pretended as if they had vacated the area. These people shot, they had Maxim guns. It was a real battle. The Germans? Yes. They shot well knowing that they have overrun the camp. And they thought they had actually defeated them. But these people retaliated at around 3 p.m. And in the evening? Yes, and fired back and killed one German soldier and six Sivanyarwanda men were injured. <laughs>